and welcome to our presentation, Lupus Nephritis, From Diagnosis to Treatment. I'm Annika Hazlitt, a member of the Board of Directors at Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus, and your host. Today's presentation is on lupus nephritis, inflammation of the kidneys caused by lupus. Lupus nephritis is a serious condition that affects half of those living with lupus. We are fortunate to have an expert on this topic, Dr. Sharon Dowell. Dr. Dowell is a practicing rheumatologist and a professor at Howard University Hospital. She will share her experience and knowledge about lupus nephritis, what signs to look for when making a diagnosis, and some important tips for managing and treating this condition. Before we begin, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our presenting sponsor, Arenia Pharmaceuticals, for their generous support in making this event possible, as well as support from Seven Minute Cinemas and Blue Eyed Crow Studio. Now, let's hear from Dr. Sharon Dowell. Thank you for that great introduction. I am so happy to be here today to share my insights on lupus nephritis. And if you are watching this, it is because you or someone that you love have been diagnosed with lupus. And so first off, I want to congratulate you on taking this first step to learning more about your condition. Lupus is a chronic, and you can insert lifelong, disorder where your own immune system attacks your body's tissues, cells, and organs. And in doing so, it causes inflammation in these affected areas. Inflammation then leads to damage and scarring, which is irreversible if it's not treated. Any tissue can be involved, so it can affect your skin and your joints, which it most commonly does, your blood vessels, your lungs, your heart, and your kidneys. And in fact, when the kidneys are involved, we term it lupus nephritis. And this condition is actually a pretty big deal because after skin and joint involvement, it is more one of the more common things that we see in lupus patients. Lupus nephritis can affect up to one third of patients when they're first diagnosed with lupus and can affect up to a half of patients who have lupus over the course of their disease. It's really concerning because it tends to occur early in the disease course, so within the first six to 36 months of diagnosis, and it tends to affect younger patients and can be very devastating for these patients who then have to live with this condition for their entire life. Beyond that, it is also more common in black and brown persons and can occur three to five times more commonly than their white counterparts. It can also be more severe in these patients and have more disastrous consequences when not treated. Women do get lupus more commonly than men, but when lupus nephritis occurs in men, they tend to have more severe disease. Now, chronic inflammation in the kidneys leads to scarring and damage. And we talk about that a lot because scarring and damage is not reversible. However, we can treat the inflammation to prevent the damage. When you have scarring and damage in your kidneys, they don't work well. And over time, about 10 to 30% of patients who have a diagnosis of lupus nephritis can go on to have chronic kidney failure, or as we call it, end-stage renal disease. Besides that, persons who have lupus nephritis compared to persons with lupus who do not have lupus nephritis have worse outcomes. They have a higher risk of early death and they also have a higher risk of heart attacks and strokes over time. So lupus nephritis is a really big deal. And we may not be able to prevent it, but we can try our best to detect it early enough that we can prevent the chronic damage. Because if we can treat this inflammation, the scarring and damage will not occur. So the next question then actually would be, well, how do we detect lupus nephritis early? Like, how do we do this? Well, we need you for that. Because number one, we need you as someone living with lupus to be vigilant for any signs of lupus nephritis. And the signs are evident. One of the most common signs is the development of swelling of the feet. 
Um, we call it pitting edema. And when this occurs, you have this uh, sense of a doughiness to your skin where when you press on the skin of your feet, it may actually leave an indentation. Now, if, if you're doing this right now and that does happen, that's okay because interestingly, pitting edema is a very common um, thing in medicine. And it can be due to something as simple as just sagging veins. However, if you do have lupus and you have this finding, you should discuss this with your doctor so that they can make sure to check you for any signs of lupus nephritis. Other common symptoms include weight gain because people begin to retain fluid, as well as frothy or bubbly urine. And we also, as physicians, we have to do our part. So I typically see my patients who have lupus and who are doing okay, so who are stable, every three months. And at each visit, we discuss their symptoms to make sure that there are no signs of a new flare or no new and concerning symptoms. I then examine them and look for signs of a flare or signs of, of lupus nephritis, such as the pit and edema that we discussed earlier. And then I do blood tests and urine tests at each of these visits that look for inflammation in the blood or the presence of protein or blood in the urine. We always do these tests when patients are not menstruating or near to their menstrual cycle um, because that can cause uh, blood in the urine as well. And also if patients have a urinary tract infection or a kidney infection, that can also cause the does these tests to be abnormal. So we also screen or ask these questions to make sure that we're timing the tests at the right time. If you live in an area where you don't have easy access to a physician or to a specialist, you too can also check your urine by doing dipstick urine analyses to check for protein and blood. And in the case that you find something that's not quite right, then you should make your way hastily to see your doctor. When the kidneys are not working well, it may allow for protein to be filtered out or to leak into the urine. This is called proteinuria. And also, when it's not working well, you can also have blood cells which leak into the urine, and we call that hematuria. I just want you to be familiar with those terms in case your doctors use them when talking to you. If we suspect lupus nephritis, we will refer you to a nephrologist or organize for you to have a kidney biopsy. The kidney biopsy is helpful because it can actually confirm that you have inflammation in your kidneys. But beyond that, it helps us to determine what type of kidney inflammation you have because it can actually manifest in different ways. There are five classes of lupus nephritis, and I don't think you need to know about all of them. But basically, class one and two, there is minimal involvement, and it's something that we just monitor. But classes three and four, we're very concerned because that means you have significant inflammation in your kidneys and you need to be on treatment. Class five is also concerning. It doesn't manifest quite the same way as class three or four, but when patients have class five lupus nephritis, they tend to have significant swelling in their entire body. And this can really affect the way they live their lives and can have consequences for other conditions. So pretty much all of my patients who I diagnose or suspect lupus nephritis in, I will refer them to see a kidney doctor or a nephrologist. And I think it's important to have that collaboration because together we decide what is best for the patient in front of us. And so generally, you know, we're all very individual and unique persons. We have our own individual concerns. We want to make sure that whatever treatment regimen we're crafting, that it's the right one for you, the patient, and that it's something that you can tolerate taking and that you can deal with. Patients who have lupus nephritis will often be seeing their primary care doctors, their rheumatologists, as well as their nephrologists, and sometimes other specialists as well. It is important to start treatment early, and that's why we screen at every visit so that we can detect the occurrence of proteinuria or hematuria early and then start therapy. I'm really excited right now about what is happening with lupus nephritis, and I know that sounds weird, 
But I'm excited because we now have so many options for therapy, more than we had just one year ago. And there's so much, so much excitement still in this area and so many new discoveries that are occurring every year. So I'm very hopeful for the future that we will begin to have even more effective options for treatment. Some of these treatments are contraindicated in pregnancy, so female patients do have to be on contraception while they are on these therapies. But do not fear, once your lupus nephritis is under control, you can work with your rheumatologist to plan and time your pregnancy. You do need to plan though, and planning pregnancy when you have lupus is great because that way you can plan for the best outcome for both you and for your baby. Some patients often ask me, is there anything that we can do to prevent lupus nephritis? And I'm not sure that we can, but we know that lupus nephritis certainly can occur when your lupus condition flares. So maybe what we can focus on is ways to prevent flares of lupus. Really, one of the best ways of doing this is to be consistent with your medication. So if you're missing a few days here and there, as one of my patients recently confided, <laughs> that for sure is gonna be your risk for a flare of your lupus. And I know, I know it's hard to have to take these pills every single day. I know it's not fair, but you need to do it to make sure that you keep your condition under control so that you don't have any of these consequences that can then have further impact on your life. So we endorse that patients should be on an anti-malarial. Um, there is common guidance that this medication may decrease the frequency and severity of lupus flares, and it forms the backbone of any therapeutic regimen. And I will not get into all of the other therapies that can be used because I know that you can have a discussion with your rheumatologist about this. More importantly though, I just want to remind you to do your best to avoid the things that will trigger lupus. So avoid stress or avoid situations that would give you or increase your stress levels. And beyond that, learn ways that you can manage stress so that it doesn't affect your body. A few other things that we consider to be just essential for living a good healthy life but it's, but it's also essential for someone who has a chronic condition like lupus. Sleep well. Set aside the best time and the proper hours to get your sleep and rest to rejuvenate your body. Exercise at least three times per week for 30 minutes and have a regular exercise regime. And use sunscreen when going outdoors. Remember that your diet is also important and plays a role. So try your best to have a diet that's rich in fruit and vegetable and all of those wonderful berries that we know have such great antioxidant properties. Lastly, I want to really encourage you to work with your doctors, your nurses, those who are supporting you in this endeavor. It is important that you are consistent with your medications and consistent with your doctor visits because we help by doing those screenings and those monitorings at each visit. And you do not want to miss this. And I shouldn't have to say this to you, but I'm, I'm sure that you all know this and it's so self-evident, but you must work to surround yourself with positive people who lift you up and encourage you and also help you to seek out information to educate yourself. I think that those of you watching this presentation are well on the way to doing that. And with that, I really want to thank Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus for the wonderful work that they are doing in raising awareness and providing su support for patients with lupus. Thank you, Dr. Dell, for sharing your knowledge about lupus nephritis, especially about early detection, and your tips on how to reduce kidney damage as much as possible. This brings us to the end of lupus nephritis, from diagnosis to treatment. We hope you found it helpful and informative. Once again, a special thanks to our presenting sponsor, Arenia Pharmaceuticals, for their continued support of those living with lupus nephritis. We also thank Seven Minute Cinemas and Blue Eyed Crow Studio for their help in making this presentation possible. Finally, we wanna thank you for watching. 
We encourage you to visit our website, kaleidoscopefightinglupus.org, and follow our social media platforms for the latest lupus news, program information, and award-winning blog articles, and so much more. Thanks for spending time with us. And remember, you are not alone. I'm Annika Hazlitt for Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus. Know that we are here for you, and please take care. Thank you.